What is up, Thrallers? Jam and John here with Thralls of Metal, bringing you another review, this time sponsored by ScreamingToilet.com. All right, what I want you guys to do right now in your computer or your phone, either click to another page in Google or click to another tab in your browser, put in www.ScreamingToilet.com. Not yelling commode, not whispering potty. ScreamingToilet.com, all right? Click enter. After you get there, have a look around. They've got uh, music reviews, movies, a bunch of pop culture stuff, a ton of horror movie things, toys. Go spend some time there, go buy something, go say hello to somebody. After you're done with that, click back and watch my review of the band Battle Daggeroth with their album Abyss Horizons, released in July of 2020 on avant-garde music. Formed in 2002, they are labeled as an international band as one of the members is from Switzerland and the other from California. There is one guy that goes by the name of Black Sorcerer Battle. He's on drums, guitar, bass, and vocals. And then another dude, Vintherket, I think, <laughs> Uh, is on keyboards. He's from Switzerland. So if Black Sorcerer Battle didn't give way to the U.S. and Vintherket didn't give way to Switzerland, I don't know what does. This is their sixth full-length record. I'd never heard of these guys prior to me picking up this album, so right on for your sixth full length. Now I just want to say as a disclaimer, um, if you guys watch Thralls of Metal at all, on a regular basis, uh, you know that you know Nick, of course, is into all sorts of shit. And then we all have our own genres that we get into. Black metal, for me, was never a big thing. So I, in the last two years or so, am becoming more of a fan of black metal. I'm learning. <laughs> uh, and this album definitely grew on me the more I listened to it. So again, the band name, Battle Daggeroth, is taken from Dagor Daggeroth. Uh, which is Sindarian for Battle of Battles. Uh, if you haven't picked up on it thus far, it's a reference from Tolkien's uh, Similarian. Thusly, you can kind of guess the lyrical content. Um, my cousin, before he passed away, watched over and over and over again the Lord of the Rings movies. So I'm going to try to keep from referencing over and over again hobbits and all sorts of things like that but who knows. There are seven tracks on this album, and three of them are over 14 minutes. Two of them are 17 minutes. One is nine minutes. Pretty lengthy album. I know it was an hour. I think it was an hour and 12 minutes or something like that. And for the most part, I'd say only half of these songs are actual songs with music in them. Most of it is just quiet voices that become chants. There's bells, there's rumbles, there's war drums, and it really it makes sense after I, you know, read up about this band and what they were about as far as lyrical content was concerned, about, you know, the, the, all this is a Tolkien reference, I thought, well, okay, that makes sense. And so the more I listened to it and battle and war drums, like in the very first song, Womb of the Labyrinth, up until about the three minute and 20 second mark, it, 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 it was just an intro. Like, I, I really thought that maybe that's how it was going to be for the whole song. It was just battle drums and chants and, and people with hammers and, you know, I thought maybe that's all it was going to be. I remember the when I heard the drums kick in, it's, it kind of sounds like, I don't know if any of you have ever used electronic drum kits, but when Roland first started releasing electronic drum kits, they put in, in most of them an 808 batch of, of sounds for like hip-hop or trance music and that's what this sounded like it just sounded like that crappy electronic snare drum from that 808 kit 
and and that's what I thought it was going to be, and I was like, oh man, what a huge bummer because this could be good. But then after about three minutes and eighteen seconds, it kicked into some actual music, very ambient. And then going on to the next song, Incantation of the Vortex. Pretty much the first minute of this track was the outro of the last track, and again synths and screams and yells and people it sounded like walking to mordor so i mean i guess i guess if, if i really had to think about it and if i was a hobbit and didn't have shoes walking up a rocky terrain carrying a gold ring with powers unknown to me i might be a little pissed off and when the music does kick in in this again we get that those those crappy electronic sounding drums for a moment and there's guitar riffs but it sounds like a swarm of bees at first they're having a really bad time walking to mordor and i guess you know from what i've learned about black metal so far is i should probably get used to you know sounds coming from inside of a cave or inside of a coffin or something and bees and walking through moisture and gargamel vocals and I'm getting there, you guys. Just be patient. The one thing I will kind of knock this album on is the guitar tone throughout the record. Just sounds like a swarm of hornets. If you really, really, really listen to it, like you can hear riffs, but you have to really hone in on it. And at this point in the game, like, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of these songs are long. Incantation of the Vortex is 16 minutes and 18 seconds of uh, predominantly bees and falling down a mountain. I will say though, if I were to ever LARP for any reason, this would be the soundtrack in the back. I don't think I'm, I'm gonna LARP. I don't even own a plastic sword anymore, so. But yeah, even to further branch out to no music, get into spectral emanations, and again, it's just creepy sci-fi noises and voices. Really, this could be what scores horror movies, or you know like in the, the Wizard of Oz, as all the characters are walking through the forest right before they're accosted by monkeys? This is when the cowardly lion would poop himself and then throw feces at the rest of the cast, which would be kind of funny. Uh, the one song I really did like, and again, it's another almost 17 minute long song, Phantasmal Eye of Death. This just seems to be one really long song. There's a couple times where there's false endings in this song, but that's not a real big deal. This is mostly just music, which is really cool. Actually, there's not a lot of vocals going on in here either. Um, I found myself banging my head a lot of times to this. This is what I would compare to a band like Achilles or Achilles. We just reviewed it. That's such an awesome record. This song is really super heavily layered. They are all about creating a soundscape here. The drone of this song really almost puts me in a trance. Like, maybe I should read the lyrics or play D&D &D or something? A question is, is block avant-garde metal a thing? And maybe I'll have to look into it, but if it's not, this is where you should start for that. The song Conjuring the Star Winds. This song is filled with about 14 minutes and 15 seconds of really creepy melodies found under about 666 layers of ambience. If these drums weren't programmed, I'd feel really sorry for this drummer. This is just non-stop for about 14 or 15 minutes of blast beats. The music never stops moving. At around 6 minutes and 20 seconds into the song, the music does drop out and you get this little kind of bass and drum groove, which really isn't found anywhere on this album. This is not something that I would call a characteristic of black metal from what I've learned at this point. But I do like that there is a lot of dynamic going on here versus, you know, either creepy soundscapes or just blast beats. There's a lot to this song. There's even some almost doomy parts in here. It's definitely a journey. My only gripe is that it cuts off super abruptly with no reason. Don't know why. And then the last two tracks, Twilight of the Cold Sun and Saturanian Moons. There's not a whole lot of music going on here. Twilight of the Cold Sun, for about four minutes or so, it has uh, just blast beats and some melodies. And then Saturanian Moons, you ever heard the instrumental tracks on Job for a Cowboy's album Genesis? It's kind of like that, which I'm not saying is a bad thing. To be honest with you, I found myself, I found it very easy to zone out um, and kind of end up in a little trance during this. It's almost like if you could meditate to black metal, this would be it. 
Yeah, I know I said Ambience a bunch, and I know I said Hobbits a bunch, but I really dug this album. Again, I listened to it probably five or six times. I didn't like it on the first listen, and I didn't like it on the second listen. In fact, recently I've learned to jam records quite a few times before I review them, so I don't give anybody a bad rap. And I'm definitely not giving this a bad rap either. Again, this is for fans of Achilles or I would state ulcerated times. I don't know a whole lot of what else to compare black metal to. And again, that's something that I'm going to have to start learning if I want to continue to have my tenure here at Thralls. And since I don't have anything else to do with my life, I think this is it. <laughs> so overall, I give this record three and a half stars. It was a pretty, pretty good listen, and even though half of it was without actual music, the soundscapes that were created were creepy as fuck, and, and definitely just a good time. Yeah, keep going. Make, what was this, the sixth full length? So there better be a seventh full length, and I'm going to buy it just like I bought this. So, if you like what you saw, click the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you know when we put out cool videos. Please, for the love of God, go visit ScreamingToilet.com. I know I told you earlier, in your web browser, www.ScreamingToilet.com. Again, not quiet potty, not yelling commode. Screaming Toilet, please go there and show these guys some love, uh, just as you know they've taken care of us here since we started. You guys take care of yourselves.